Hello, this is Dad O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in to the second part of three of the Drums of Fu Manchu, a Republic cereal from 1940. This is 15 chapters, so it's a long one. In this one, we have Henry Brandon plays Fu Manchu. Now, other actors have played Fu Manchu over the years. Warren Olin played the Devil Doctor in four movies. He was best known for his Charlie Chan movies, in which he played Charlie Chan 16 times. Boris Karloff played him in 1932's The Mask of Fu Manchu. Christopher Lee starred in five movies, Peter Sellers in one, and Nicolas Cage in Grindhouse. Nicolas Cage is Fu Manchu. Hmm. you got to see a clip of that, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go with the next couple chapters, and we'll be back. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, folks. Hi there. Chad and Bunny here from the Chad and Bunny Chad Show. Chad Bunny Show. That's right. Every time... Ow, what was that? Oh, sorry. I had to sneeze. Every time that I watch or we watch Don's Breakfast Cereal Show, we make sure that we get a delicious bowl of Don's Breakfast Cereal. Delicious. Delicious. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That stuff is... Oh, so delicious... I can't get enough of it. Have you so, tried this yet? Yeah. Next time you're watching Don's Breakfast Cereal Show, make sure you eat a bowl of delicious Don's Breakfast Cereal. Tastes kind of funky. Yeah. Thanks, Don. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I think we're clear now. Oh. Have you really tasted this? No, I'm tasting it now. It was, oh, my. It tastes like I wheat. Mean, it's. I mean, um. It's, that ain't right. That it ain't right. right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, let's see what the ingredients. Let's take a look. It's dry, there's no sugar, mm. it's wheat, it's processed wheat, it's processed wheat byproducts, cardboard. What? Ah. Oh, oh no. Here, here's why it tastes so bad. 1940. <laughs> this box was made in 1940. Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. Send us I, a fresh box, please. I mean, yeah. oh, I'll eat it gosh. though. I'll still eat yeah. it. <laughs> we'll still eat it, so whatever. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> well, my God, but... No matter, we'll go on in anyway. Alan! Alan! Here I am under the couch! Thank heaven you're safe. You all right, son? I guess so. Westman Man 2. He said he'd be well across the border on the way to Asia by the time the telephone set off the explosion. We may not be able to stop Fu Manchu, but we still have a chance of getting to the tomb ahead of him. We have? Definitely. The only clue that Fu Manchu has to its location is the Kardec segment. Professor Randall has an exact duplicate of it. And he's having it translated. Come on. It names the Temple of the Blind Dragon, located somewhere in the hills of Nihala. That name may have been changed since then. Nihala. 
then Fu Manchu must be headed for Branapur. That's the only large settlement in that area. Does that mean that the lost tomb of Genghis Khan is located in that general district? It's almost a certainty. We have a fair chance of finding the tomb before Fu Manchu if we work fast. Precisely. While you're making preparations, I'll go ahead by clipper ship and do a little investigating. We can leave immediately. We? You forget it was Fu Manchu who murdered my father. He shan't escape if I can help it. I'm not concerned with Alan Parker, but Sir Nayland Smith is an enemy not to be taken lightly. Crawford is going to the Orient to attend a Saipan meeting. If he were on board the same clipper ship with Sir Nayland, anything might happen. I must use the telegraph at once. Pay them. that onto the clipper ship yourself. We don't want to disappoint Sir Nayland Smith. Now suppose we check with the wireless operator. He may have some word for us. I think it's a good idea. No, I think we both better get some sleep. See you in the morning. Good night. and a victim of his own scheme to kill me. Why, that's Mr. Crawford's manservant. What's this you're saying about my servant? Only that he just made an attempt to kill me with a poisonous lizard. 
I suggest you have the body removed, officer. I will give you a detailed account of the uh, accident later. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about this, if there's, if there's anything I can do. Well, we can't blame you for this. Come in, Alan. I encountered one of Fu Manchu's poisonous lizards some years ago in Burma. The scent on the fellow put me on my guard. There's an American by the name of Crawford stopping at the Imperial Hotel. And we have every reason to believe he's working for Fu Manchu. You might have him here on a routine inspection. I'll call at once. Imperial Hotel, Mr. Crawford, please. Hello? This is the British Consul. We find that you haven't submitted your passport for inspection. Yes, of course. I'll be right down. We'll check with you later, Wilson. Right. Alan, I think I'll go up into the cable office. You want to come along? No, I'll meet you here in an hour. Right. Goodbye. What is it? Our illustrious master awaits all loyal members of the Psi Fan. All right. What did you find out from Crawford? Nothing definite yet. He returned to his hotel to get some papers for me and hasn't come back. How long ago was that? Over an hour. I rang his room, but there's no answer. No answer, eh? Maybe I can find out something if I drop in while he's out. Has Alan been around? Not yet. Well, when he comes, ask him to wait for me at my quarters, will you? Yes, of course. Thank you.
gentlemen of the Titan. Illustrious one. I have summoned you from your various provinces to bring you good news. The scepter of Genghis Khan will soon be ours. This Kardak segment bears the secret of the lost tomb, where the sacred scepter has been buried with the great Khan for centuries. Once this segment is inserted in the idol from which it was taken, it will reveal the location of the tomb. The idol you speak of, illustrious one, do you know of its location? The segment names the Temple of the Blind Dragon, but as you all know, it is now known by another name. I shall have no difficulty in locating this temple. And once there, I shall obtain final instructions which will lead me to the tomb. The tribesmen are ripe for revolt now, but unless we can bring them the scepter... When the scepter of Genghis Khan reposes in my hand, I shall declare the prophecy of the Holy Year fulfilled and give the signal for a revolt which will drive our enemies into the sea. This temple of the blind dragon, illustrious one, you say its new name is known to us. Were I to mention... to mention it, you would recognize its identity at once. While Sir Nayland Smith and his young assistant, Alan Parker, are searching the wasteland for its location, I plan to win the goodwill of the temple priests and obtain the information we desire. Does that meet with your approval, Mr. Parker? You were very clever to trick my messenger into bringing you here. That feat was accomplished only once before in the history of the Saipan. And it may interest you to know that that person did not leave the room alive. And now, will you please honor us by rising, Mr. Parker? Stand back.
send you from your various provinces to bring you good news. The scepter of Genghis Khan will soon be ours. This Kardak segment bears the secret of the lost tomb, where the sacred scepter has been buried with a great Khan for centuries. The segment names the Temple of the Blind Dragon, but as you all know, it is now known by another name. This Temple of the Blind Dragon, illustrious one, you say its new name is known to us? Were I to mention... to mention it, you would recognize its identity at once. While Sir Nayland Smith and his young assistant, Alan Parker, are searching the wasteland for its location, I plan to win the goodwill of the temple priest and obtain the information we desire. Does that meet with your approval, Mr. Parker? Will you please honor us by rising, Mr. Parker? Stand back. Let's take him to the fort for questioning. As officer commanding this garrison, it is my duty to maintain law and order in the district of Ranapur. Anyone guilty of inciting the natives is usually handed over to a firing squad. You're rather a hole, Crawford. You better change your mind. All we want to know is the location of this Temple of the Blind Dragon. I, I, I've, I've already told you, I, I don't know where it is. We know its name has been changed, and you know what the new name is. Tell us that. Aren't you forgetting a gentleman by the name of Fu Manchu? My life wouldn't be worth very much if I talked. After what Major Carlton said, your life isn't worth much if you don't talk. Give us this information. Now see that you have safe transportation back to the States. Half the world away from Fu Manchu. Can I depend on that? Major Carlton gives his word, we'll all vouch for it. All right. I'll tell you. The place you're looking for is now called... The Temple of the Sun. The Temple of the Sun. When Professor Randolph gets here, he can tell us where it's located. to you? Why, certainly. That's a holy shrine, located in the heart of the Nahala Mountains, and a good day's journey from here. Then there's no time to lose. I'll ask Major Carlton for a military pass for the plane. Alan will show you our course. Oh, right. <laughs> and the Major gave Sir Naaman Smith permission to fly the plane to the Temple of the Sun as soon as it is checked. You're a faithful servant, Dunbar. A faithful servant. Is there much time at our disposal? Certainly until nightfall, illustrious one. The plane has come from afar off, and there is much work to be done. Even time serves me. 
I have evolved a simple plan which will prevent Sir Nayland Smith from ever again interfering in my affairs. And Crawford, the informer, illustrious one. Are we not going to avenge his treachery? In good time, Dangra, all in good time. Meanwhile, this is what I want you to do. is located somewhere in this general vicinity. By landing in this clearing, you should be able to obtain some means of transportation to the temple. But you said the countryside is swarming with hostile tribesmen. We should be safe enough so long as they don't know our true mission. By leaving now, we should arrive there by tomorrow morning. And back tomorrow night. Good luck. We'll be expecting you tomorrow night. Right. something wrong. Major Carlton changed his mind. Doesn't want you to take off. Where is the Major? In his office. He wants to see you both. Maybe we could make him change his mind again. from our outpost that the natives are acting up, particularly in the neighborhood of your objective. We realize the risk, Major Carlton, but once we locate the lost tomb of Genghis Khan and recover the sacred scepter, we can break up that spirit of revolt. And if Fu Manchu succeeds in getting the scepter before us, he'll have every fanatical native in Asia on his side. And maybe something what you say, Mr. Parker, but there's commanding officer. Contact him by short wave. Calling Sir Nayland Smith and Alan Parker. This is Fu Manchu calling Sir Nayland Smith and Alan Parker. I know you are in the army plane bound for the Temple of the Sun. This Fu Manchu, or he thinks Alan and I are in that plane. I have seen to it that you will never reach your destination. Even before you can return to Pranapur, your plane will fall into the jagged hills of Nihala. Goodbye, Sir Nayland Smith. Goodbye, Mr. Alan Parker. No, no, it, it, it's a mistake. Gods of destruction favor us. I'm Crawford here! Uh, are you there? Th this is Crawford! Porcher, there's nothing we can do for him now. Do you hear me? This is Crawford here! Smith and Parker are not with me!
On the contrary, Major. We are now more determined than ever to reach the Temple of the Sun. With the destruction of our plane, the only means of getting through is by motor car. And I needn't tell you of the risk involved. That's the only way Fu Manchu can travel. So if we get an early start, we can get there ahead of him. I can't spare any of my troops, but I can send an additional man and a driver with you. That'll be splendid, Major. After all, our mission is to contact the temple priest and prepare him for the caravan that is to follow later. I searched the body carefully, but found no message on him. Was there any chance of him handing a message to the Dakoit during the fight? Not a chance. They were never in contact up to the time the Dangra was killed. In that event, you will leave at break of day by motor car as planned. Fine. Then it was Crawford who was killed in the plane crash. Yes. And according to Dangra, the Nayland and Allen are planning to leave by car at dawn with their copy of the Kardak segment. Do you think they would really be so foolhardy as to travel openly through the Nahala Hills? They are apparently desperate to reach the temple before us, or else they underestimate their danger. Look, I send word to the various leaders. Tell them to order out their tribesmen at once and... Dennis, Nayland, Smith and Party. Official business, foreign office. Carry on, Sergeant. Beyond here, we're on our own.
The Dennis Nayland Smith and Party. Official business, foreign office. Carry on, Sergeant. <laughs> Beyond here, we're on our own. takes word back we've been killed in the crash. Has there been any report from the hillmen? The two soldiers were killed, illustrious father, but they could find no trace of Sir Nayland Smith and Alan Parker. Then they must be hiding in the hills, waiting for Randolph and the others. If they reach the temple with their copy of the Kardak segment, nothing can stop them from discovering the location of the lost tomb of Genghis Khan. I think I know how to stop them. We must reach the temple before they do. The only conclusion we can draw is that Fu Manchu has spies everywhere. So the natives were obviously lying in wait for us. I believe we're safe now. The Temple of the Sun isn't far from here, and those natives are friendly. And we can ride on while Alan and Mary locate a good campsite. They can join us later. We'll have everything set by the time you contact the temple priest. Here's a chance to show what a good girl scout you are. See if you can find some water. All right. into the tent. Fu Manchu is your master. You will obey him without question.
indeed pleased to see you again, Mr. Parker. I was about to pay a formal call upon your friends at the Temple of the Sun. But first, I shall arrange for your entertainment while I'm gone. Bring him. How do you like my little device, Mr. Parker? Ingenious, don't you think? When the cord breaks, the tree will catapult back into its original position. What happens then, I leave to your imagination. I must leave you presently. Is there some little favor you would have me perform? I would like a drink of water. No, Kai. Bring water. for your friend. I feel that I should tell you that the cooperation of Miss Randolph assures the complete success of my plan. traveled halfway around the world to return the Kardec segment to the temple from which it was originally taken. Knowing the ancient prophecy, we feared that some unscrupulous person might learn the whereabouts of the lost tomb and obtain Genghis Khan's sacred scepter. There was no peace in the hills of Nihala until the English came. This is further proof of your great friendship for my people. In the name of that friendship, we now ask that you help us put an end to the spirit of revolt which is increasing among the hill tribes. Your wish is as a command. Speak. What is it you would have me do? By returning the segment to its original place in the altar, we would learn the secret of the tomb. With your consent and blessing, we would remove the sacred scepter and turn it over to the High Lama of Branifer. You would make him the leader, prophecy to appear before my people? Exactly. And a leader for peace instead of for war. With your indulgence, I will now commune with the spirits of my departed ancestors. gentlemen for your forbearance. If you will now replace the segment, you may obtain the information you seek.
That is strange. The legend states that Kardak will speak once the altar stone is replaced. But that part of the prophecy must have been added by some well-meaning but misguided follower who was carried away by his devotion. I made a copy of the inscription. As soon as I translate it, we'll have the key to the location of the lost tomb of Genghis Khan. May Kardak bless your endeavors. Kardak will not bless imposters. Here is the real segment so long lost from your Kardak altar. These men, Sir Aprani, are plotting to seize the great Khan's scepter and start rebellion. I come to you in peace. Let this speak for me. How do I know which stone is false and which is true? The prophecy states that Kardak will be heard again once the segment is back in its place. Has Kardak spoken? Do you believe that the segment you hold will cause Kardak to speak? once more to speak. An ancient evil is about to be undone. This man is clever, unscrupulous. This is a trick. My ears do not deceive me. Kardak has spoken. These men have defiled Kardak's holy altar and deceived you, her priest. The desecration of the shrine demands a sacrifice. Who would be a true follower of Kardak must first produce this sacrifice. I have brought the sacrifice. Miss Mary! She's hypnotized. a sacrifice acceptable to the ancient rites of Kardak. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, don't niggle now. Gentlemen, you're about to witness a miracle unseen since the days of the illustrious Genghis Khan. Through this crystal, the sun's power will be magnified to unbelievable proportions.
sacrifice acceptable to the ancient rites of Tarbeck. You're about to witness some miracle unseen since the days of the illustrious Genghis Khan. Through this crystal, the sun's power will be magnified to unbelievable proportions. <laughs> the small idol in the path of the ray is of solid bronze. Manchu's daughter. I found her concealed behind the sacred goddess. It was her voice that you heard. Seize him! to catching them now. Let's go back in. As soon as I finish this translation, we'll be ready to start for the tune. said uh, Prani. Yes, it is a narrow defile in the hills about five miles east of here. The trail leading to the tomb is at the head of this gorge and the entrance is concealed by a door which is apparently a part of the rock cliff. Now there's a bar relief figure of the sun god on this door and by pressing the right eye of that figure a lock is released and the face may be swung aside. From there on gentlemen our route is clear. We simply follow the main tunnel into the tomb. That is all the information I require. We go to Dragon Gorge at once. Look at it. That is all, except for a rather sinister postscript. Death, guard the entrance. Beware. There must be a trap in that gorge. We'll have to proceed very carefully. Let's get started. There's no need for all of us to go. Alan and I can do the job. You and Peachy better stay here with Mary. Do you think it's safe for just you two to enter the tomb? Why not? Fu Manchu can't know where we're going. Goodbye, Mary.
There must be a trail somewhere. Find it. Master! Master! of the ancients, a spear gun clipped by a vine. It is on that hill. Collect those spears, reset that trap. Hide the body carefully. This will make a pleasant surprise for Sir Nayland and his friends. look like a trail. I think I'll have a look around. We know we're on the right path now. There it is, just as it was described.
Must be this way. Must be down this tunnel. will bring the whole ceiling down on us. Where are the others? We were discovered, Master. They are coming this way. Manchu. Can't help that. Let's go ahead. That must be the door to the tomb. Manchu, and bring the whole ceiling down on us. Let's get out of here.
This sound vibration will bring the whole ceiling down on us. Where are the others? We were discovered, Master. They are coming this way. Can't help that. Let's go ahead. That must be the door to the tomb. Listen. The drops of Fu Manchu. They'll bring the whole ceiling down on us. Let's get out of here. We intend to keep you with us, Wu Manchu. You shall be our constant care until you are in the hands of the authorities and the sacred scepter of Genghis Khan turned over to its rightful guardians. Try the door again, Alan. Come down from there. I can't find anything here. Look over the side wall. This lever may be the relief. Try it. Resting place of its sacred scepter. I can understand how you feel, Fu Manchu. If the scepter had fallen into your hands, you would have used to become the leader in a revolt that would have thrown all of Asia into war. Fortunately, that danger has been averted. The scepter will be turned over to the High Lama, who will lead the tribe back into the ways of peace. Perhaps, but the decision may still rest with Genghis Khan. You see, Sir Nayland, he wrote that inscription. Only in death did I enter here. And for you who enter otherwise, forever shall you remember and forever regret. You stay here with him, Alan. No, Sir Nayland. Your life's too important to risk now. But it's my duty...
Stand back! Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Sir Nayland! Temple of the Sun. Break that door down if I have to dynamite it. Man, I thought you were in that tomb. How did you get out? Luckily, I found the secret exit. The scepter. Didn't you get it? Yes, it's safe. I hid it. I'll get it. This doesn't seem to be your lucky day, Fu Manchu. We must hurry back to Branapa. Some of Fu Manchu's men may spread the word that we have this. We shouldn't have any trouble getting back to the temple. But how about the road from there to Branapur? The tribes would have already started the revolt. We'll never get through. Why not take Fu Manchu back to the Temple of the Sun and hold him there while I ride on to the post for a squad of soldiers? That's a good idea. Get going. I'm sure no one will molest us here in the temple. We can keep both Fu Manchu and the scepter safely while you go for the soldiers, Alan. Good. Is the car ready? It's just outside the entrance. If I'm not back by nightfall, I don't have to tell you what to do. Well, wish me luck.
were you off the name? Any outcry would be most disastrous. Stop it, Gunn. I'm sure you will see the wisdom of giving me the scepter now, Professor Randolph. Step this way. Do you really expect to escape with a scepter, Fu Manchu? You know there's only one road leading out of here, and Alan's on it with a squad of soldiers. That only makes my work easier. With the dynamite you have at your camp, I shall have no difficulty in removing Mr. Parker and the soldiers. This way, please. Drive to their camp and get the explosives, then return here. You say Sir Nail and Smith has my father a prisoner and is going to take him to the Temple of the Sun? And Mr. Parker is going to drive to the post for help? you were holding my father at the Temple of the Sun. If you think taking me prisoner will change that, you're making a mistake. I expect to be able to make your friend see the advisability of exchanging prisoners. your friends will be pleased to see me instead of the soldiers. I know my father will. The young American moves rapidly, but death is even swifter than he. It is a rare privilege to be able to remove all opposition and wipe out an old enemy at the same time.
understand you are holding my father at the Temple of the Sun. If you think taking me prisoner will change that, you're making a mistake. I expect to be able to make your friends see the advisability of exchanging prisoners. Your friends will be pleased to see me instead of the soldiers. I know my father will. The young American moves rapidly, but death is even swifter than he. Prophecy, illustrious one. 
when will it come to pass? This is the holy year. The tribesmen impatiently awaiting the sign of the Sattar of the Great Khan. Events have not transpired as I expected they should. At the moment, the young American, Alan Parker, has the sacred scepter. Alan Parker has the sacred scepter of Genghis Khan? Yes, but not for long. In order to get it to the Fort Branapur, he must pass through your Nihala Hills. My tribesmen will bring him in upon the point of their swords. That is good. When can you get a message to them? Immediately. Within the hour, the beacon will flame. Every road and track through these hills will be a death trap. Give your orders at once. Again, what happened? The scepter. Yes, Alan, what did happen? It's a long story, and I'll tell you later. But we won't be safe until we get that back in Branapur. It's going to be very difficult. The hills are swarming with hostile natives. And to make matters worse, the leaders are working with Fu Manchu. Yes, I know, but we'll have to try it anyway. The sooner we get going, the better chances we have. Come on. lights and try and sneak past them. But if they spot us, we'll have to shoot our way out. Right.
They'll be waiting for us. see the gorge from the top of that ridge. We'll be right back. I'll be all right. Hurry. until you get through. No, but how can you do Never that? mind about me. I'll be all right. Hurry.
is Alan. He'll join us around the bend. a magnificent piece of work for the Empire, St. Aland. With a sacred scepter of Genghis Khan in our hands, the peace of Asia is assured. The work's not quite finished, Major Carlton. Until the scepter's in the hands of the High Lama, there's still danger of widespread revolt. At least we kept it from Fu Manchu. Determined as he is to get the scepter, he wouldn't dare attack the fort. Would it be possible to have the Lama come here to get it? Yes, I, I think that can be arranged. I'll telegraph him at once. would an emissary take traveling from the temple to the fort? They usually go by horseback over the upper trail. Could your men dispose of any escort which might accompany this emissary? Easily illustrious one. Then bring him to my tent, preferably alive. The High Lama is unable to come himself, but he is sending an emissary who should arrive this afternoon. Good. In the meantime, I could be making out my report to the Foreign Office. Certainly, certainly. I'll see it or not disturbed. Thank you. Oh, Sir Nayland, allow me to put that in the safe. Thank you. Halt! You are my prisoner. My Lama himself would be deceived by the likeness. The only one who might make it difficult for me is Sir Nayland Smith. But with these credentials, I believe we can deceive even him. Emissary from the High Lama to see Major Carl. Yes, sir. He's expecting you. Hi, Major Carlton. Won't you please come in? I am called Kumaral, emissary to His Holiness the High Lama. These other gentlemen helped the Nayland recover the sacred scepter of Genghis Khan. Professor Randall, Miss Alan Parker, Kumara, emissary of the High Lama. 
It is a great pleasure to meet those who have been of such service to my people. Is the Nayland still working on his report? Yes, but I'll call him. As a matter of precaution, the High Lama requested that I give you these credentials. Thank you. You see, we're taking no chances. The scepter falling into the wrong hands. Sir Nalan is still busy and asked to be excused. I am most anxious to meet the illustrious gentleman. I have heard so much about him. You'll hear more about him, I'm sure, once you rid your country of the menace of Fu Manchu. And now, with your permission, may I return to the High Lama with the sacred scepter? After your tedious journey, we would be ungracious indeed to allow you to return without tea and refreshments. Besides, we must arrange for military escort as a precaution against Fu Manchu. <laughs> a worthy precaution indeed, but as for the rest and refreshment, that will not be necessary. Yeah, we insist. Your escort will take some time to arrange. Meanwhile, I'll see that your men are taken care of. We cannot afford to wait any longer. Is the car in readiness? Yes, just this one. Use this on the sentry outside the Major's office. Be sure he makes no outcry. Service? Yes, Major. If you are wise, you will make no outcry and go quietly to that closet. Don't touch that button. Then you're not the emissary of the High Lama, but one of Fu Manchu's hirelings. Not one of his hirelings, Major. Fu Manchu himself. There is too much at stake to entrust this matter to a subordinate. But we waste valuable time. Go to the closet. Please send my apologies to Sir Nayland Smith. I'm sure he will understand. just crashed through the gate. We fired, but he got away. We still have time to catch him. Will you loan me one of your cars, sir? What's wrong? The scepter. Of course. I took the liberty of borrowing it in order to photograph it for my collection. Well, what's the joke? Well, the joke's on Fu Manchu when he opens the case he's stolen and finds the scepter gone. It must have been accidental. They could not possibly have suspected me. But what excuse can we give the tribesmen? when we are unable to present the sacred stuff that we have promised them. You admit defeat too readily. There is still time to get it. But the men at the fort have been warned. They will redouble their guard. On the contrary. They will not expect me to strike again so soon. Tonight, while they are still gloating over their apparent success, I shall recover the scepter.
afford to take any chances. There's no telling when Fu Manchu will strike again. Why not sneak the scepter out tonight? We can reach the temple by dawn before Fu Manchu has time to gather his forces for another attack. I think Mr. Powdery is right. I can let you have some of my men as an escort. Something's gone wrong. Let's have a look. They must still be in the port. Separate. Hello, this is Don O'Malley again from Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. That was the second part of Drums of Fu Manchu. Hopefully you'll join us next week for the last couple chapters. And we'll be showing one of the TV shows, Fu Manchu. Now, if you like, go to Donald O'Malley or Don's Breakfast Cereal Show on YouTube. Hit like and subscribe and you'll never miss one of my shows. So stay safe, see you next time, and be kind to each other. Good night, folks. That's the Mary and the Jedi practice.